So this past weekend, I went to two theme parks. I went to Busch Gardens Waynesburg to experience Hollow Screen, and then I went to King's Dominion to experience Halloween Haunt. I saw a lot of differences, and I just kind of want to talk to you guys about that. I am going to talk about some dispatches in this video. I'm all going to talk about uh, some of the haunt stuff and the things that are uh, the little side pathways that are going through. But I kind of want to at least give like a, hey, Bush Gardens versus King's Dominion in for October. The whole Halloween kind of festivity. And that's what we're going to kind of talk through today. So first, let's talk about the haunts. The haunts were interesting because I think both parks offer something different within them. I will say King's Dominion, I feel like at the end of the day, may have had an up on uh, Bush Gardens in a lot of different areas. The first thing I noticed when you're going through the haunts at Bush Gardens is that there be some times when you go through the maze, you go down one hallway, turn around, go back through another one, and go through another one, and then you would finally see a person. And there's a lot of dead space in those Halloween things. Like even some of their, their bigger ones. Um, Kill Arnie was by far the best out of all the Halloween haunts, I believe. Uh, but even I went on Saturday and it was 940. Okay, the park's closing and everything else. We're just trying to get the people through. But it was a complete different experience without having enough people in the maze. But something that was really cool that King's Dominion did was when you're going through the maze itself, you had uh, little animatronics that kind of filled in those gaps. And I understand like, hey, it's it's money to, to you know, hire all those different haunt people and there's all these different things. But... It was really cool because I still had that feeling around every single corner when I was at King's Dominion. I was like, I don't know what's going to pop out at me. Um, there's not as much dead time, which led to me to really kind of look at the mazes and be like, oh, man, I liked I liked King's Dominion's a little bit better. Um, and, and they used in King's Dominion, I feel like there was still creative creativity and how they scared you. Uh, there's some creativity in one of the things called Monster Con. Um, you would walk through and it had these sheets, but it was like projected like old monster movies that you'd have to keep on walking through, which was pretty cool. And the sets were just done at a level of what I would normally see a Busch Gardens level of set design. Even their Bayou one at King's Dominion, uh, when you're walking through, there's some lights that was projecting on the ground to make it look like water and... Um, it was a little bit more intense on the King's Dominion side, um, cause you know, Busch Gardens a little more family oriented, but it was just a better experience and I, I can't explain it. Also something that I noticed, uh, when it was at Busch Gardens is the pacing of how they let people in. Um, there was a lot of moments where, uh, you would catch up to the people that you were just in front of and then the scaring would just be off in, you know, how they would scare you. And it was kind of just, it was interesting, but King's Dominion, every time they, before they let somebody through, they're like, hey, there's no filming, there's no blah, 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 blah. They repeated it every single time. But I think that was such a good thing because it reminded people what the rules were and it made for a better experience uh, at King's Dominion. And so that was definitely something that I was like, oh man, that's very interesting. And I definitely jumped way more at King's Dominion. Um, at Busch Gardens, the first night I went, it was pretty cool because we did see in the Bayou part, I think that's like a, a number seven, like my top one at Busch Gardens, I would say is Kill Arnie. And then my second one will be the Bayou. Uh, there was this really funny couple like fighting back and forth about certain things when we we're going through it. And um, that was probably my best experience, but that wasn't consistent every time I went through the park itself. And which just kind of made me a little bit sad because uh, I was like, darn it. Like I remember Busch Gardens and King's Dominion, like, you know, 13 years ago. And I feel like they're two different experiences. And I miss a lot of the old stuff that was offered back then. Now, okay, on the haunt side or on the, the haunted pathways, if you will, I would say they're kind of they're kind of even. Bush Gardens definitely wins it when it comes down to like makeup and costumes, and it was done up. Like, I mean, there's some like the haunted. Uh, the, the the headless people that were going around and there's one guy that had like this green eye kind of thing like that was killing it the pathways were amazing and king's domain's pathways were pretty good but i love their placement because they place things in a way that when you're walking through you had to kind of walk around some stuff which provided opportunity for people to scare you and uh which is really great now a random notice a uh, thing that i noticed was this this fog and the smoke <laughs> the, the bush garden smoke smelled okay it was kind of annoying but it smelled okay King's Dominion smoke just, it just had a weird smell to it. There's a, there's moments where I was like, I think I'm gonna die because I'm breathing in all this smoke, uh, which kind of stinks. Uh, but overall, the both pathways were pretty decent. Um, going back a little bit to uh, haunt mazes, for me at King's Dominion, the top two was definitely um, 
uh, let's see, the bayou, and there's like this little pathway fairy tales thing or whatever it was. Because in the fairy tale thing, it was just like a really clean pathway, but it was just organized in a way that it, it just, it was mysterious. You're going out of corners. You didn't know what was gonna go. I, I felt this anticipation at King's Dominion and at Busch Gardens, it felt like it just fell flat with a lot of the anticipation stuff. Um, the worst one I would say at Busch Gardens currently is the monster one that's near um, the old Busch Gardens or the old um, Dragon Fire, where the new Big Bat Wolf, whatever it's gonna be called, is at. Um, that one was kind of just, I don't know, it just didn't hit the same way. And uh, and so I just found myself in this weird, weird place, you know, where it's like, I remember these places being so legit, um, you know, which kind of stinks. As far as security, security was um, kind of hit or miss. I didn't see carding at both places. I mean, I'm an older person, so that is what it is. But in the place we had, we had two, uh, younger people with us and they still didn't necessarily get carded or I didn't see anybody being like, you know, actively looking for ID check. Busch Gardens puts a little barricade that you have to walk around, but it almost felt like, what were you doing in there? There's nobody, nobody really manning it for there to be a double check kind of thing. It seemed more like a formality. At Busch Gardens there, I saw like two cops walking around, which was pretty cool in full uniform, um, but nothing really more. But I feel like there's a lot more security at King's Dominion. Uh, but there were, they felt like hired security uh, going through, but I felt like they were way more present there. And so, but I felt, I felt pretty safe while I was there. It wasn't too terrible. Um, I felt like maybe King's Dominion, I felt like they were more on top of it as far as making sure that people weren't being rowdy than Bush Gardens was. But I understand those are two different parks, attracts two different people to some extent. Another thing I wanna talk about is dispatches. Oh my gosh, dispatches. Twisted Timbers, it was like really rough and it was only because some of the staff were very interesting because we had this one person at the what is it that little scan thing the the metal detector and they were just like talking to this one couple and then god forbid the other couple came all the way to the front again and then they were talking to them and so it was just like this delay of of like getting on the ride it, it, it was it was it was pretty rough and like it was the worst i've seen on that one that was pretty uh I was pretty annoyed. He's just the same guy who couldn't focus. Yeah, yeah. Talking to different people, like just, like it wasn't, I don't know, just that pushed me over red. So honestly, I would say that was the worst uh, dispatch I've actually seen on this ride before. But overall, still good ride, a little crazy. Um, and then, but you go to Busch Gardens and that wasn't necessarily any better because I was on Alpengeist and uh, we used our front of line pass and so we skipped the line and it was like a 90 minute wait. And then we get there and it took us like an hour from just sitting right into that front part. And the ride did break down. I'll give that, that ride did definitely broke down. But it was kind of sad because you see the workers like that were there were just like, uh, you know, like not moving. I'm not saying that they'd be like racing it, you know, and going crazy, but you can tell it was just like, there was no energy put into it. And it just took forever. And so that was just an experience where the dispatch times, I was like, what is going on between both parks? Later on in the evening, there was other rides that went really well. An honorable mention, this guy at, uh, there was like a trio or three people that were working or two or three um, that were working at uh, Racer 75. Wow. I mean, he was killing, he was sweating though. He was just like, okay, let's go. Do, do, do. Going through each of the different, um, the different uh, seats to make sure that everybody was ready and good to go. But they were passionate about it. They were talking to the crowd and working things out. Um, uh, Outer Limits was also in the, another time that that happened. And it was just great. It provided a great experience. Um, but I just felt like the energy was not there at Busch Gardens. Um, that was there at King's Dominion. So overall, I'll say, just putting it together. I mean, this is a short little video for today. I would say the best thing, if you wanna, if you wanna have a good day, right? is to go to Busch Gardens during the day, get the amazing vibe that Busch Gardens puts on, right? And kind of go, at, at dusk, maybe do some of the haunt stuff if you want to, or just walk around and see all the really cool costumes, but then book it to King's Dominion for the rest of the night. Because if you want to be scared, if you want to be like, oh, what's going on, you know, have the anticipation, have that fun, King's Dominion is definitely gonna be the way to go. And the night rides at King's Dominion are amazing, and it was a lot of fun. There's not that many waits. Again, always go on Sunday nights. Sunday nights are helpful. If there was a, win, a clear winner as far as doing a Halloween event, man, I would probably say go to King's Dominion if you want that scare stuff. And I'm a Busch Gardens person. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm all in for Busch Gardens. I, you know, I love Busch Gardens. I think it's a really premier park. 
a lot of Busch Gardens Tampa people don't think so, <laughs> but you know, I think it's a really great park, but uh, I just found myself, that's where I was at. So, so thank you for joining us today. Like and subscribe if you want to see more things. And what are your thoughts? Like, what do you think about Busch Gardens Hollow Scream and then uh, King's Dominion's Halloween Haunt? Like, what are your thoughts on which one you should go to? And I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching all the way through. And here are some other videos that you can check out while you're here. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next adventure.